As a kid, I was always doodling and drawing. The most significant memory of, you know, being really immersed in art was my, my father dragging me, kicking and screaming to uh, a weekend art class. That weekend art class ended up really opening me up. It made me realize as a, you know, seven or eight year old that I could do something that other kids couldn't. Not only that, but I, I loved it. And I could create my own landscape of characters and people that just, you know, flew out of my imagination. I was born on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, California. I, I think I was a pretty well-behaved kid up until I was eight. At eight, uh, I moved to um, Britain. I started getting into trouble first around when uh, we started skateboarding. We skated everywhere, did whatever we wanted. Um, we had no respect for anything. And it was all about parties and drugs and girls and drinking and everything that comes with growing up in London. First time I ever got arrested was a, a glorious one. It was on my 13th birthday. And uh, my father he gave me a little bit of birthday money to go buy some stuff. I think I was going out to buy lead figures to paint, but I wanted to steal some music. So I went to the Tower Records at Piccadilly Circus, and I got caught stealing cassette tapes of De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising, and Public Enemy, Fear of a Black Planet. So I was keeping it real even when I was 13. I, you know, in a lot of ways, I felt like I, I just wanted to test the boundaries of trouble. I think that it was a good thing that we moved out of London pretty soon after that because uh, I don't know if I would have ended up getting into college. I might have just screwed it all up. Luckily, every time I got in front of a judge, got in trouble in school, and got in front of a principal, my saving grace was my art. It was easy to prove how dedicated I was and how much I loved doing it because even the other kids in school who were also talented at art, None of them were as prolific as I was. I mean, I was just burning rubber, making art all the time. The benefit of having lived in a few different cities as a kid is that I got a, a range of influence. Los Angeles gave me Pal Peralta and skateboard culture and surf culture. In London, that's when I, I really recognized graffiti for the first time, and the graffiti scene in London was really strong by that point. Every day I'd take a train and a bus to school, and along the way I'd just see layups and layups of beautiful pieces. All those worlds started layering on top of themselves for me in terms of influence. The piece behind me, um, is based off the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Painted it with uh, spray paint and acrylic. The horses were all spray paint, um, and then stencils in the patterns, and then I used some brushwork for the hair and detail work. Before we painted this wall, uh, this building just had tags scrawled all over it, it just looked messy, and uh, we had some artists in town, so we just called the building owner out of the blue, asked him if we could paint his building. He said, sure. So we did. We painted both sides of it all the way down and around. I think that um, we deserve more uh, from our landscape than gray buildings and billboards. We deserve art for the sake of art. And you don't really get that anywhere else. A lot of building owners aren't uh, commissioning art uh, for the sake of it. Where else do you get your dose of art on a daily basis, especially in a concrete city like New York? You know, the only place you really engage with art on a street level is a legal art. The purpose of it is to beautify that part of the neighborhood or that building and you know a lot of times as street artists we see uh, something ugly or decaying but we see beauty in it. There are a few other artists in my family, mostly on my mother's side. My mother, she was in theater her whole life so you know, I think I get my work ethic from her. Her and I are alike in a lot of ways. My father uh, wasn't a visual artist but he was extremely creative. He was a photographer for Playboy. He was a, a cigarette model back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, he was a film producer. He really did a lot with his life. My father passed away four years ago, kidney cancer, uh, renal cell carcinoma. It came in a crazy time because he was actually working with me at Thunderdome. He was um, managing a lot of my toy production projects. So we were working really closely together and he and I were extremely tight. When he died, it was just the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. And I was at a point where my company was busier than we'd ever been. I had one giant client 
that was paying us like $30,000 a month to do all this design work. I had like seven people full time, my own fine art, toy production, design work, exhibition work, all at the same time. And found myself just swimming and, you know, barely able to keep my head above water. Somehow I was supposed to keep my company together and um, I just barely did. After all of that, you know, it made me realize what direction I needed to take things in.